how to save your assets with C++ in Unreal. Because, hey, if you just did some modifications to your assets, you probably want to save them. So let's get to it. And here we are in our header files. And today we have a few little functions and they are all going to be editor only because it's only possible to save the assets while being in the editor because the packaged game doesn't have access to the asset files. So let's make sure that we are inside the editor and then we can take a look at the functions. So the first function is the save asset function. That's going to be the main one for this video. So save asset. To save an asset, we need to provide the path of the asset we want to save. And that's about it. The function is going to try to save that asset. And yeah, that's it. That's as simple as that. So save asset, provide the path of the asset you want to save and the function is going to try to save it. Then we also have a second function, the mark asset modified, because it's possible in the editor that you modified an asset, you did some changes to it, but Unreal didn't pick it up. It's possible that the asset is not marked as modified and the user doesn't know that he has to save that asset. And that's why I think it's good to mark the asset as modified yourself to make sure that, well, the user knows that he has to save that asset. So mark asset asset modified and you also provide the path of the asset you want to mark as modified and the function is going to try to mark it as modified for you. And then we have two other functions. If I scroll all the way down right here, we have the get modified assets to retrieve all the assets that are currently modified in the editor. So get modified assets, uh, you don't have to provide anything and the function is going to return you a list of all the assets that are currently modified in your content browser. And the last function is simply to save all those assets. So save all modified assets. That function is simply going to to take all the modified asset in the content browser and save them. It also comes with a little options to let you decide if you want to prompt the user to ask him, do you want to save your assets or to simply force the saving of all the assets and do it yourself. If that boolean is equal to true, we're simply going to ask the user, hey, do you want to save your assets? It will be a good idea. And otherwise, if that boolean is equal to false, we're simply going to force save all the assets right now. So good. These are all the functions we're going to do today. And now it's time to jump in the CPP. And here we are. And we're going to start with the include as usual and we only have one, we have the file helpers.h. In that header file, we have everything we need to mark the asset as modified and save them. So file helpers.h inside the Unreal AD module, so only available in the editor. I'm going to go inside my build.cs file, make sure that my Unreal AD module is right here. There we go. I already have it. If you don't, make sure to add it. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. Perfect. So my build.cs file is good. I have all my includes. And now it's time to take a look at the first function, the save asset function. To save an asset, what do we have to do? Well, we have to first load the asset. Right now we have an asset path and file helpers is not able to save an asset path. You have to provide it the asset. Actually, you have to provide it the package of the asset. We're going to do that in two steps. The first step is to first load the asset. So I'm going to do that. Load the asset right here. So you object pointer asset equal to static load object, you object class, because we don't care about the class of the asset at the moment. And we also provide the path of the asset we're trying to load. So static load object loading that asset, and it's going to give you an asset object. If that asset object is not valid, I'm just going to return because I'm not going to be able to save that asset because, well, it doesn't exist. Cannot save an asset that doesn't exist, obviously. So if it's equal to null, I'm just going to return right here. But if the asset is valid, as I said, we're going to have to load the package contained inside that asset. So that's what I'm going to do right here. U package pointer package is equal to asset get package because the asset is contained inside a package and that's the package we have to save. We cannot save the asset directly. We have to save the package contained the asset. That's just how it works. So I have my package right here, getting the package from my asset. And once again, I'm going to make sure that it is valid because we're not going to be able to save a package that is not valid. So here I'm just going to check to make sure that is valid. And now that we know and we're sure that the asset is valid and the package is valid, then we can simply try to save it. So U editor loading and saving utils uh, call the function save packages. And we have to provide a list of packages we want to save. In my case, I just have one package. So I'm just going to insert it inside a little list right here inside two brackets that's going to convert it into a list. So I'm converting my package to a list of package I want to save. And then I have a little boolean. That boolean is going to let us decide if we only want to save that package if it's marked as modified or if we always want to save that package. In my case, I always want to save the package. I don't care if it's modified or not. I just want to save the package. So what I'm going to do is simply set the boolean to false so it saves the asset even if it's modified or not. 
Good, so save packages, provide the packages you want to save. In my case, I only have one, so my package right here. And I always want to save that package. So I'm setting the boolean to false. That's going to tell me if I was able to save that package or not, because it's possible that it doesn't work. So let's say if the file is read-only, in that case, you're not gonna be able to save on top of that file. And that's going to give you a result right here. And based on that result, I'm going to update my information message to tell my user if it was a success or not. Good, okay, that was for the first function. The logic is actually super simple. You just have to load the asset, get the package inside the asset, and then you can simply save the package right here. Super simple, three steps. Then to mark the asset as modified, that one is pretty similar. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit right here. And we have to do the same exact process at the beginning. So we start with an asset path. And in that case, we have to also access the package. So I'm just going to load my asset first, static load object, load the asset. That's done. Check if it's valid. It's valid. Good then I can load the package from that asset. So package is equal to asset get package. That's giving me a package. I'm gonna check if it's valid once again, because I cannot mark it as modified if it's not valid. And once I know the package and the assets are valid, I can simply try to mark it as modified or in Unreal terms, package mark package dirty. That's going to mark the package as modified. It's going to display the little star icon in the content browser and the user is gonna know that he has to save that asset. That's gonna give us a little boolean as output to tell us if it worked or not because it's possible that it didn't work. I don't really know why, but I guess it's possible. And then based on that result, I can simply update my information message to say that it worked or not. Perfect. So that was for the first two. Then we have the get modified asset because if we marked a bunch of assets as modified, it will also be nice to be able to retrieve them and know which assets were modified in the content browser at the moment. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to scroll down right here, get the modified asset. And that one could be straightforward, but it's not because we only only have a way to access all the dirty packages in the editor, not the assets themselves. So here I have to first create a list of view package, and then I'm going to convert that list of view packages to a list of assets. So here I have my list of view packages, uh, modified packages right here, and that list is going to be populated inside this function right here. So f editor file utils get dirty packages. That's going to give me all the dirty packages in the editor, and it's going to output them inside this little variable right here. I have all my modified packages. That's perfect. But I I want to be able to return a list of assets to my user, not a list of packages, because the packages don't really mean that much. It's just a package. We don't really care. We want to know which asset was modified. So what we're going to do is loop through all the packages and convert them to U object. But before we do that, actually, it's possible that a conversion from a U package to a U object doesn't work. And in that case, I'm going to obviously return an error message to my user. But before I do that, I want to first assume that the process is going to be a success because it's just going to be simpler that way. At the beginning of the function, I'm just going to say, hey, it was a success. And then if I encounter an error during the loop that I'm going to do through all the packages right here, I'm going to tell my user, oh, no, never mind. I actually found an error in that. So I'm assuming that the process was a success. And then I can finally loop through all my packages and build a list of assets from it. So a theory of your object, that's going to be the modified assets we're going to return at the end of the function. So a new list right here. Then we can loop through all the modified packages we retrieve at the beginning of the function. So we have all the new packages right here. Then during the loop, I'm simply going to convert the package to an asset. And the way we're going to do that is by calling the function find asset in package. That's going to give me the asset. The asset is either valid or not. It's possible that the package is empty and is not linked to any asset. And that's why right here, I'm just going to check to make sure that my asset is not equal to null before adding it into my modified asset list. So if my asset is valid, I'm going to add it inside my modified list. And once that's done, at the end of the function, I can simply return all the modified assets I found looping through all my packages. So I obtain all the packages, I loop through all of them, obtain the assets from those packages, add them into a list, and then I can return the list to my user. And one last thing before we go to the next function, I'm just going to add a bit more information to my user. So if I was not able to retrieve an asset from a package, then I'm going to update my information message. So if it's still a success, it means that it's the first package we find with a problem. And then I'm going to turn my boolean back to false because it's not a success anymore. And then I'm going to update my information message to say that I was not able to properly retrieve all the modified assets. I had problems with these assets. And then I'm going to list all the packages that I was not able to retrieve the assets from. And that's what I'm going to do right here. So here I'm only updating my message once at the beginning. And then I'm going to list all the packages that I found that had issues. And that's why I decided to simply set it to true at the beginning. It was a success by default. And if I encounter an error, then I can just update and build my error message to say that, hey, all those assets have issues. Perfect. Okay. 
that's done for the get modified assets. We just have one last function and that one's going to be pretty quick. So save all modified assets. That feature is already available inside the header file we already included and it's already separated based on that little boolean right here. So if we want to prompt the user, the function that we want to call is uEditor loading and saving utils, save dirty packages with dialog. That's simply going to do exactly what we want. It's going to prompt the user and ask him if he wants to save all these assets. And actually you have a little bit of control on all the assets that you want to propose the user to save because those two little boolean right here that we have at the end that I've set to true and true, these are just there to let you decide if you want to save the map packages, so all the levels, and also the content packages, which are everything else. Um, I don't know why Unreal separated those two categories, but you can either ask the user to save only the map, only the content or both. In my case, I just want the user to see all the modified packages, either if it's a map or not, it doesn't really matter, and ask him to save all those assets. So that's why right here, I'm just going to set those two boolean to true, but you can decide yourself what's better for your case. In my case, I want to save everything. So save dirty packages with dialog in the case I wanted to prompt my user. But if I don't want to prompt my user, well, that's as simple, you editor loading and saving utils, save dirty packages, both bools are equal to true, and that's it. That's just going to force save all those assets right away. It's not going to ask the user if he wants to save them or not. It's just going to save them. That's all we wanted. And both those functions are going to give you a little boolean to let you know if it was a success or not. And based on that boolean, I'm going to give a bit more information to my user. But that's about it. We're done with the functions. And now it's time to jump in Unreal to test all that. And here we are in Unreal. And today we're going to keep it simple. Uh, we have three assets right here. We have a static mesh, a texture, and a world. And we're going to simply mark those assets as modified try to save them and see if it actually works. And we're going to do that using a user interface as usual. And the user interface, that's the one that I have right here. Pretty straightforward. I have a combo box with the path of the assets I want to either save or mark as modified. So I can decide which assets I want to work with using this little combo box right here. It already contains all the different assets that I have in my content browser to make it simpler. Then I have a little button to get all the assets that are currently modified in the content browser. And I'm going to output the result inside this little text box right here. I'm going to display the name of all the modify assets that I have in my content browser. And finally, I have one button and a checkbox to save all the modified assets and to prompt or not prompt the user while doing so. And that's about it. So let's go see uh, the graph real quick. So I have my graph right here. When I click on save, it's going to save my asset. So save asset. When I click on mark modified, it's going to also modify my asset. So mark asset modified. In both options, I'm going to use the same text, the same combo box that is written in my user interface. So the same asset. When I click on save, it's going to call the save asset function, providing the path that is written in my combo box. So which asset I want to save, that's going to be that one. And I'm going to try to save it. And same thing with the mark modified. So when I click on mark asset, modified, I'm going to call mark asset modified function, providing the same path. Uh, then we have the get modified assets. That one I'm just going to call my function get modified assets. That's going to output me a list of objects. And based on that list of objects, I want to update my text written on screen. And that's that big part right here. The most complicated part is simply to update the text written on screen when I'm trying to display all the assets that are currently modified. So here I'm just clearing my text, then looping through all the assets that are currently modified. And then I'm updating the text with all their names. So I'm going to take all their display names and add them together with a little space in between. That way it's easy to read and we're going to see all the names of all the assets that are currently modified in the content browser. That was the most complicated part. And then it's super simple once again. So when we click on save modify, we just call save modified asset, provide the value of the checkbox to decide if we want to prompt the user or not. And that's it. So let's see if it works. I'm going to go back right here, run my editor utility widget. And here we go. Now I don't have any assets that are modified in the content browser so I can get the modified asset. Okay. I don't have anything in my list because, well, I don't have any modified asset. I can try to save the modified asset. Uh, it tried to save, but there was nothing to save. So no new changes to save. I don't have any assets to save. I didn't save anything. Okay, that makes sense. What if I try to mark an asset as modified? So I have my mesh right here, mark asset as modified. Okay, and now I have a little star icon next to my mesh. And if I get the modified asset, hey, I have my mesh. That's good. I can save all the modified asset. Oh, it saves my cube and I don't have the star next to it. That's good. And get the modified asset. Hey, it's not modified anymore because I saved it. Okay, it seemed to work. So I can mark it as modified. I can save it manually. So save my mesh. Here we go. It saved it. I can even try to save it even if the asset is not marked as modified. And we can see that it processes. It goes pretty fast, but it saves the assets anyway. And it updates the log a little bit. So if I clear my log, we can see that, hey, it saved the assets. Same as if the asset was modified and then I tried to save it. So I really resave the asset even if it was modified or not. 
Good. Okay, so now I can mark my meshes modified, my texture, and maybe my world. I can get the list of all the assets that are currently modified. That's going to give me all those assets. So my world, mesh, and texture. I can try to save them, but actually I'm going to prompt the user this time. So prompt user to save all, save the modify asset. It shows me this little menu right here. I can decide which asset I want to save, which I don't want to. So let's say I'm just going to save my world, save selected. It saved, hey, it just saves my world. The star icon disappeared right here. If I get the modified asset, I don't have my world anymore. I have the two other ones. I can do the same thing. I can save my texture right here. I'm going to save my texture. Here we go. It's gone. And then if I click on save modified again, it's going to reopen that window. Then I can decide which asset I want to save. I'm going to save my mesh and hey, it saved everything. I can do the same. I can just mark them all as dirty once again. I can then uncheck that checkbox right here to save everything. So save modified assets. It's just going to save everything and it seems to work. And actually it's also going to work if I modify my asset manually in the editor. So let's say I'm going to open the texture. I'm going to change something. Doesn't really matter. This one right here. Here we go. Now my texture is marked as modified. I can get it because it's marked as modified and I can also save it because, well, it's marked as modified and it's going to work. So it's not just going to work with this mark asset as modified. It's going to work with all the mark asset as modified that are happening in the editor. And I guess that's about it. I guess that covers everything. Now you know what to save your assets with C++. And that's going to be it for today's video. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.